So friends, you may have watched my three-part series on the Knickerbocker Hotel, and there's some things that we didn't cover here uh, while we were there that was in uh, Gene Smith's book. Gene was with Elvis at the time, and there's also things we didn't cover about a location of some photos that I thought I understood until I got back and started studying the pictures, and I realized that I didn't know where for instance this picture i thought i understood where this picture was taken at after i got back i realized i didn't as well as this photograph and this photograph which are both in the same place so i'm going to start outlining where these photographs were taken at so you can kind of understand we didn't cover this in the video at all and then we'll talk about some other history of the knickerbocker hotel as well as what gene smith said happened while they were there and also why they got kicked out of the knickerbocker and a little bit of other Knickerbocker history as well. Stay tuned. So we're going to start right here. When we first got up there and I glanced and saw the stairs on the top of these utility buildings, you can see right here, I'm going to light it up in just a second. I, just from memory from seeing the photographs, I thought, well, that's it because it looked just like that. The photographs do. And I even filmed it that way. You're going to see in just a moment, I show you the photograph and I actually tell it, I'm uh, voicing over, this is not the actual sound from that night. But just at first glance, I thought this was it. Then then when I got back and I was uh, editing this video out and studying it, I realized that I am not correct. So I studied it and figured out where it actually happened at and why it actually happened at these places. So this is this part of the story. So we're going to look at where these two photographs were taken right here. Study these a little bit and I'm going to point out a couple of things. So if you notice he is standing between it. Look there's nothing under his feet. He's standing dead on top of the wall. The next photo he's standing dead on top of the same wall but notice there's a little drop down to the left. You see there's places around the building that are dropped down. That is one corner that there was a drop down. Now that same corner is right here. I'm going to zoom in and show you where that corner is at on the hotel. And notice that the Knickerbocker sign is top left. That is the corner where this photograph right here was taken. And so behind him is where that drop down is. This is a drawing from a postcard. That's the same corner on the top left right there. Notice there's a fire escape. Now here's a photograph, an actual photograph, and notice there's a fire escape as well from that same corner. Now this is a today picture. Notice that there is no fire escape. And right there you see that antenna, little tiny antenna. You see the antenna right there. He was sitting on that corner in the photograph he was standing to the left of that little antenna on that bump up that's where the fire escape went down back then it's no longer there so that is where he was standing in these photos that photo is just to the right or up on that bump up and that is on you can see right at the edge of the bump up now let's examine the other photograph and i'll show you some differences so it was definitely the same day he's wearing the same clothes in fact some have said that he was wearing gene smith's penny loafers so he wouldn't get tar on his shoes i don't know that to be a fact but that's what has been said but notice that there's a pipe under his feet right here and then there's a building out in the distance and I remember standing up there of course it was dark but I stood up there and looked around and thought I do not see the top of this building so evidently it's been torn down you see it's got a very unusual looking top now and I'm zooming in on it now I'm going to show you where that top is at there's actually it's still there and it proves that this fire escape was not on the other side of the building where the other photos were taken check this out this is a photo of the other side of the building notice that the Knickerbocker sign up top is facing this is the back side of it. You see there's a fire escape right there on this back corner. So the way they were is there was a fire escape on this corner and then on the far corner on the front side. So this one would have been on the right rear and then the one on the front would have been on the left front. Now look on the bottom. You see it says Knickerbocker. Now look at the building across here. There is that building that you see in that photograph with Elvis right there. There it is. Now I'm going to show you a drone shot that I did where I go from the Knickerbocker and I pan around to the left and I slowed this down a little bit so we could see it. It was really, it was actually a very fast clip, about three seconds. Where you see that liquor bottle right there, there's a sign. You see the top of that building just to the left of the, of the liquor bottle. It's really hard to make out, but it is right there. It's kind of brown in color. So that is the building 
that would have been in the background of Elvis on that back fire escape. So now you know, friends, this photo, if you're standing looking at the building, would have been the right rear corner. These two photos would have been the left front corner. So I think we've covered all of the photographs other than the ones actually in the apartment, which we were unable to get in. Let's look at a couple of other things. Stay tuned. So let's talk about Elvis's cousin, Gene Smith. This is Elvis and Gene walking into the Knickerbocker Hotel. And Gene was with Elvis during all this time. And he wrote a book called Elvis's Man Friday. And in the book, he talks about a couple of different stories, two of which I'm going to point out to you about being at the Knickerbocker that seem a little out of character to me for Elvis. But Gene says this is what happened. Another thing Gene said in the book was that they rented the entire 11th floor. And I don't believe that to be a fact. Uh, everything that we have have found out says that he was on the 10th floor in a corner room and some people even say he was in 1016 that room that we filmed was 1014 uh but that may have been two rooms condensed down you know it was one big room so i don't know about the numbers but according to uh if you watch my other videos according to pete that actually works there that is in fact the room that elvis was in um but Gene speculated that uh, Elvis had said to him that he didn't believe that the actors on the movie set trusted that he was a great actor. So he thought he could convince people that he was really going to jump off the Knickerbocker. So he went up on the roof and Gene went with him and he stood up on the ledge and screamed down to people that he was going to jump. And according to the book, he drew a pretty good crowd, 40 or 50 people. The police came. They finally got scared and ran back to the room and police came up and knocked on their door and they pretended that they didn't know what he was talking about because they were sleeping but he said Elvis did in fact do that but unless there's any eyewitnesses that watch this video and say yep I was there I don't know I don't know why Gene would not be truthful about that but the saying that Elvis didn't believe that the other actors think he was a good actor and that he this would prove anything, I don't, that, that just sounds a little far-fetched to me. Gene also said in his book, and this is actually how they got kicked out of the hotel, was that in the kind of the same vein, he wanted to prove that he was a good actor. So he told Gene to keep this pistol that he had brought home from Love Me Tender Set, which was a fake pistol with blanks in it. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to come up in the elevator. You wait in the hallway and when I come up, up you shoot me. So when the doors opened, Elvis was with a man and a woman, middle aged, and Gene yelled, Now I've got you, you no good show off, and I'm going to fix your acting career for good. And with that, he started pulling the trigger of the pellet gun. Bang, bang, bang. He said Elvis reeled backwards against the couple behind him, and then he stumbled out of the elevator, groaning and holding his stomach, and I pulled the trigger three more times. Bang, bang, bang. Elvis fell back against the wall of the hallway, clutching his stomach, and I could see that he had smeared a lot of stage blood across the front of his shirt. The couple still in the elevator were screaming and shouting and pointing at me as Elvis slid down the wall and crumpled to the floor. I just stood there grinning at him, trying to look like some nine kinds of nutcake, and as the elevator door began to close, Elvis moaned and flopped one of his feet back behind him, stopping the elevator door, causing it to rattle open. The ashen man inside the elevator stooped down and gingerly lifted Elvis's foot and placed it out in the hallway so the elevator door would shut, and then jumped back and the elevator doors clattered shut. As the elevator began to descend back towards the ground floor in the hotel lobby, Elvis jumped up off the floor laughing himself silly. So then they went and told the hotel management and of course they called the colonel and the colonel rushed up there thinking that Elvis had really been shot and it was just total chaos as you could imagine and, and the colonel was trying to get it fixed before anybody called 911 and that kind of stuff and they got kicked out and had to go to the Beverly Wilshire Hotel at that point because uh, the antics had gotten completely out of hand. This right here is where it would have happened at. This is footage from before with Pete. We just walked out of Elvis's apartment. You can see the stairways to the right. You'd go up to the roof, one step up, uh, actually two floors up to the roof. He would have gone down this hallway, Gene would have, and he would have turned right here where you could see Pete, and there's the elevator door. I believe it was that set of elevator doors right there that this happened at. And so can you imagine Elvis laying there and his foot falls in the place of the door and the man pulls his foot out so the door will shut so it'll go back down and according to Gene's book it happened right there friends right there incredible story so other notables is D.W. Griffith some of you old 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 film people may remember this he did Birth of a Nation in 1915 Way Down East 1920 Orphans of the Storm 1921 and he even did a which is incredible to me he did the life of General Villa which was Pancho Villa and the movie starred Pancho Villa himself in the movie 
movie and he directed it. So he did a lot of that kind of stuff. And he actually created United Artists together with Charlie Chaplin, Mary Pickford, and Douglas Fairbanks. So he did a lot of important things. He actually died here at the Knickerbocker in uh, 1948 of cerebral hemorrhage on the way to a Hollywood hospital. Now, some say that he died in his room. Some say he died in the lobby, just like William Frawley. I suspect that they may be getting it confused with William Frawley. If not, both of them died in the lobby, which is very bizarre. But that's another famous person, and I've got one more little quick story to tell you about something that happened here. You know, Elvis was pretending to commit suicide. Well, somebody actually did. Stay tuned. The lady's name was Irene Lentz, L-E-N-T-Z. She married at one time and she was Irene Gibbons, but most everybody knew her as Irene. She was an American fashion designer and costume designer. She ended up creating costumes for the movies. She created Ginger Rogers gowns for the movie Shall We Dance with Fred Astaire. Then she went on to be requested by Doris Day, and I'm just hitting the surface. There's a lot more to it than this. And she created Doris Day's outfits in the movie Midnight Lace and also Love Lover come back. Here's some examples. And you even see, this is Doris doing a uh, an outfit test, and you see that it says right there, the creator is Irene. Unfortunately, three weeks short of her 61st birthday, November the 15th, 1962, Lentz checked into room 1129 at the Knickerbocker, which is on the top floor. She checked in under an assumed name, and she jumped to her death out her bathroom window. She did leave a suicide note for friends and family and for her ailing husband and for the hotel residents apologizing for any inconvenience her death might have caused. Per her wishes, she was interred next to her first husband, director F. Richard Jones, at Forest Lawn Memorial Cemetery. Now... Doris Day said that Lentz was upset and nervous, and she confided in her that she was in love with actor Gary Cooper, who had died the year before, and he was the only man that she ever loved. So the only man she ever loved was already dead. Her current husband, Elliot Gibbons, was sick, so she took her own life. But her outfits, her designs are so amazing that they have brought them back, and they're in some modern-day films. In in 2013, uh, some of her stuff was used in some other shows, Angelina Jolie wore some. Kara Cedric wore her stuff in The Closer. So she, her stuff is still living on even today. I bet you didn't know that the designer of all those clothes jumped out of a window at the Knickerbocker. Thank you for watching. I have other videos that will be coming up or another set of videos, but it's not Elvis related, about something that happened at the Knickerbocker. But this wraps up all the Elvis stuff unless we get back inside. Thank you for watching.